this course, we have introduced the notion of infrastructure systems as complex systems and the notion of infrastructure systems as socio-technical systems. Both in their physical dimension and in their social dimension, infrastructure systems behave as complex systems. As Professor Eve Middleton explained, complex systems are characterized by emergent behavior. That is, the behavior at the macro level system emerges from the behavior of system elements at the micro level. The resulting behavior of the overall system often cannot be predicted. The engineering scientists among us may be puzzled here. Since all the technical parts of the systems are designed according to functional specifications and performance specifications, how can it be that we cannot predict the behavior of the overall system? After all, if we interlink systems with specified behavior into a larger system, we would expect the larger system to behave predictable as well. However, this is not the case. The behavior of the system as a whole is unpredictable, and this lecture will explain why. The complexity of the physical infrastructure systems has many causes. The legacy infrastructures of the industrialized world are a patchwork of local, regional and national networks which, in the past, were subject to national standardization schemes. For example, railway systems in different countries may use different railway gauges. Also in different countries, electrified tracks use different voltage levels. And some use alternating current, while others use direct current, so that building a safe and smoothly working international system entails technological challenges. Legacy infrastructures are a patchwork of old and new technologies. Some parts of the electricity infrastructure in Europe and the US date back more than 50 years. The exact technical specifications of old parts of the infrastructure may have been lost. Also, records of where specific underground parts of the infrastructure are located may have been lost. Furthermore, wear and tear will play a role. But very often we do simply not know enough about the aging behavior of infrastructure components to predict when and how they will fail. Local conditions such as mechanical load, soil humidity and acidity will differ, causing different aging behavior of underground cables and pipelines. The management of infrastructure assets has become a new field of scientific study since the privatization of drinking water infrastructure in the United Kingdom. In the early 1990s, the newly privatized Yorkshire Water Company discovered that they were losing more than 40% of their drinking water on the way between the drinking water plant and their customers as a result of leakage from old pipelines. It therefore comes as no surprise that Yorkshire Water had a keen interest in improving its distribution system and ensuring its long-term robustness. Their efforts played a big role in the development of asset management standards, which are now being adopted worldwide by operators of capital-intensive infrastructure assets. Another cause of complexity is changing functionality. The cross-border interconnectors between the national electricity systems in Europe were originally intended as a sort of backup facilities to be used only if the system stability at the national level needed support. But nowadays, in the situation of a Europe-wide electricity market, these interconnectors need to accommodate massive flows of electricity that result from electricity trading, which gives rise to the question if and how much of their capacity should be reserved for the original technical stability support function. Yet another example. The nature of electric power generation is changing. More and more power is being generated from intermittent renewable energy sources, such as wind. More often than not, 
Wind turbine parks are located far from the load centers. In Germany, for example, wind parks are largely located in the northern part of the country. The load centers are largely located in the southern part of the country and they used to be served by hydropower, nuclear and fossil fuel based power plants located in the southern part of the country. But now with the sudden closure of its nuclear power plants, the German load centers have become more dependent on wind power supplies from the north. There is, however, a lack of interconnection capacity between the northern and the southern part of the country, so that the electricity flows generated by the large-scale wind farms in the north need to find their way to the German south via neighboring countries. The flow pattern in the European system is drastically changing. And since the amount of electricity generated from wind and solar energy is increasing, it has become heavily dependent on the weather. So far we have been talking mainly about legacy infrastructure systems and you may have started to wonder about new infrastructure systems. They do not yet suffer from wear and tear. And you may expect them to be well documented in each and every technical detail. Surely you would expect such a system to behave more predictably. I'm sorry to disappoint you. For a small system at the level of a home or a neighborhood, it may be possible to model the system accurately and predict its behavior. However, most infrastructure systems are much larger and have a tendency to continue to grow as a result of what we call network externalities. Anyone connecting to the internet increases the value of the internet to other users. Anyone buying a smartphone increases the usefulness of such phones to other people already using a smartphone. Once a new infrastructure system, once a new infrastructure service takes off, the system tends to grow until the usage of that service is universal or near universal. And on that scale, it is almost impossible to predict the system's behavior. And that is why infrastructure systems for energy transport, telecommunication and information services have a natural tendency to grow into huge systems, comprising a huge number of subsystems, links and nodes, all of which are interdependent in several ways. If one subsystem is not functioning well, this may have far-reaching repercussions on the functioning of the overall system. The interdependencies between the subsystems can take various forms, from single linear dependencies to multiple non-synchronous dependencies. Moreover, the nodes of the network interact with and adapt themselves to their surroundings. But the reaction to external changes is often non-linear, which can result in unpredictable behavior of the system as a whole. Deterministic chaos is just one form of such unpredictable behavior. As the number of subsystems and interrelationships increases, and as those interrelationships become more diverse, it becomes more difficult to gain an overall view of the system and to model it. Eventually, the system will become so complex that the analysts can no longer recognize or model it at all. Chaos theory shows that even if it were possible to accurately describe the changes in the nodes as they are influenced by their environment, the prediction of the state of the system could gradually diverge from its actual state due to the exponential growth of tiny errors in the measurement of the system's initial state. Studies on complex systems often use the concept of agents for interacting elements in the system. In general, an agent is a model for any entity in reality that acts according to a set of rules, depending on input from the outside world. An agent can be an automatic on-off switch embedded in a local control system. It can be a sophisticated software entity 
that is capable of intelligent control actions, or it can be a human controller or any other decision maker somewhere in the infrastructure system. The emergent behavior of the infrastructure system, which is the behavior of the system seen as a whole, follows from the behavior of the agents at the lowest level. In many cases, emergent behavior can be described by new rules, new formalisms at higher levels of aggregation, disregarding the actions at the lowest level of the agents themselves. This coincides with the notion that the value of a physical infrastructure is determined by the physical system's performance at the top level only. As an end user, I do not care what switches or cables are used, as long as I can make a phone call, watch the television, and have a comfortably heated home. By now, it should be clear that our definition of infrastructure does not only refer to the physical network that connects the suppliers and end users of an infrastructure-bound service. In our view, an infrastructure system includes, besides the transport and distribution network, the carriers, the conversion and storage facilities, as well as the governance, management and control systems that are needed to make the system meet its functional specifications and its social objectives. In all parts of the system, social agents, or actors as we call them, are making decisions that influence the behavior of the system. Such decisions may be concerned with investment in new technologies or capacity expansion, in the acceptance or rejection of certain services, or in the rules imposed on the system's operation. The complexity of infrastructure systems in the social domain is the subject of the next web lecture. Thank you for your attention.